met without regulation. But they would fail if they, if they weren't meeting people's needs, the business wouldn't be successful. Ultimately, the consumer can uh, make what, what the producer... If the producer just makes whatever they want and no one's there to buy it, they're not going to make it anymore because well, it's going to lose Adam money. Smith wrote those books in 1776. Adam Smith was exactly right completely. He believed in labor theory of value, which was Marx believed in, and that's completely ridiculous. This is Adam Kokesh reporting from Occupy Wall Street, and I'm here with someone wearing a nice little black and yellow button that, let's just say, sets them apart from the rest of the crowd a little bit. Why don't you tell us your name and what you're doing here, sir? My name's Michael, and I'm here trying to educate people on volunteerism, ending the Fed, things like that, free market. And how has your message been received by most people here at Occupy Wall Street? Most people are very interested, but they just think we need more regulations and things like that. But if you expand the government, the corporations are just going to take control of it even more. So what are the kind of mental barriers, the, the, the resistance that you're getting to the message of volunteerism within this crowd? It just seems that they love force so much. You know, it's just in, in, in their minds, basically probably from public schooling, that we need a government to force people to do things. And as we know, that, that causes this whole problem. Well, do they really love force or are they like, unwilling to see that force is behind what they're advocating? I think that's, yeah, definitely. They don't see it, but you know, on a, on a level, like they, they are willing to use force, but I don't think they realize what they're, that it's actually force, kind of. So you're doing great work here reaching out to people. Have you, have you actually converted any? Some people. There have been a few anarcho-syndicalists, uh, and they actually really like the idea of volunteerism. They've never heard of it before, but they're actually very interested in it. So an anarcho-syndicalist would be like a non propertarian anarchist, someone who kind of wants there to be no government, but also has some kind of crazy idea about giving up property rights, correct? Basically, they let, I'll give you an example. Let's say they have a factory. They think every worker should own that factory. There should be no managers, no bosses. Basically, everyone would control the factory. And I would explain to them, like, that's fine under, under a volunteer society. You can have that, you know, but we can't have our system. But under volunteerism, that's allowed. So. You still have to allow people to own property and not put limits on how little or how much property as long as they acquire it justly, correct? Exactly. Okay, so how long have you been out here? How many days and, and, and how much time have you put into reaching out to this audience? Well, actually, every Friday we're down here so spreading uh, Federal Reserve awareness. Um, and then every other day I would come down from work, you know, try to talk to people. So it's working out pretty well. Does that make you a part of this movement? I guess you could call me that, but more of a, a teacher than an actual angry protester. <laughs> Do, would you say that most of the protesters here are just here out of, out of angst? I would say so. Most of them are, are very angry, but it just seems that they're more angry at a, like, like a, a, a business, let's say, for example. Like the, they'll be very angry at uh, Bank of America, for example, but they won't realize why, what brought about this uh, financial crisis. They don't look at the larger picture, picture like uh, looking at the Fed and how uh, government agencies like uh, uh, Fannie Mae and things like that contributed to this crisis. What do you think is going to come of this movement? Well, honestly, I think at one point, uh, it's just going to, something's going to have to happen. There's going to be a turning point. Hopefully it won't get violent. I'm hoping for that. But um, it seems that po some of the police officers would want that to happen because they're, they're actually, they've been instigating fights with people, trying to, so they can, uh, Bring about SWAT teams and other, uh, you know, LRADs and things like that. Or use the sanitation as an excuse to clear people oh, yeah. out of the park, right? Yeah, they did that, I think, uh, last Friday. And they, it didn't work. No, actually it didn't. And that just shows that these, they're willing to, um, like the protesters, they're willing to actually clean up the park and to be able to stay there. So isn't that a voluntary agreement by itself? And stand their ground, and, and that's pretty admirable in itself. But what do you think is going to come of this? Uh, like, do you think the people here are going to be able to hold their ground through the winter, I've heard that they've raised about half a million dollars, which, if you see that there's really only a couple hundred in the in the core group, probably at least by global standards, puts them somewhere in that one percent. Ironically, but um, they're talking about renting some space indoors and moving this thing to be sort of a more long-term activism project that kind of gets away from the occupation part. Do you, th do you see that happening? Probably during the winter, because I think it's very hard to imagine these people staying out here in like freezing weather. A lot of these people are, would probably just, you know, as you said, they'd use that indoor. Because uh, I know they've, like you said, they've actually they have a few buildings right now. Ironically, one of them was a bank building, and they're using it as a uh, like a place for their supplies and everything. So this is a, a forum for conversation. This is a place where people of a, a lot of different opinions are able to come together. There's, there's there's a good conversation happening here. There are a lot of bad ideas going around. There's a lot of 
bad activism happening as well. There's some immoral interactions with the police on, from, from both sides, to be fair. Uh, and, and most of the, the immorality in, in those confrontations is from the police, not the protesters. But some sometimes it's, it's, the, it's the protesters too, like you said, deliberately creating confrontations with police. Exactly. So do you think this is a good thing for the American social conversation? Well, I'd say this park, it's a good example of a free market. We're all out here spreading our ideas, are we not? It's like a farmer's market. You can be there selling apples, I can be there selling bananas, you know? So we're all out here giving out our ideas. Is, is, this, is that like the, the dirty little secret against uh, all the, the communists and socialists and statists and, and the liberals here that they're actually taking part in the most free market possible, at least a free market for ideas, and, and almost a government-free zone within that park. I mean, they're fenced off, exactly. and the cops don't go in there. Maybe they'll all come to the conclusion, eventually, that a voluntary society is the only moral way for us to, to interact and to organize ourselves. Hopefully. I'm very hopeful of that, but it might take a couple of years. Who knows? Some of these people are very hardcore in their beliefs, but like, like I said before, if we're not out here you know, bringing about ideas of volunteerism and things like that, then they win automatically. Is for not out here educating them or spreading out these ideas, and they're just the only ones here. Obviously, they're going to win. <laughs> so, well, let's hope the truth wins. I would hope so too. And and that the people engaging in this conversation come to the same conclusions that we philosophical anarcho-capitalist voluntarists have come to that using force to organize society in any way is always morally wrong. But standing up for your rights and being a part of the conversation is always a good idea. Thank you for the work you're doing here.